Hi guys, today we are going to go over the simple math questions for the 9th grade SHSAT. If you're taking the normal 8th grade SHSAT, still pay attention because here we will discover a bunch of useful tips and tricks that you can utilize. If your SHSAT test is coming up in 2 months, 2 weeks or 24 hours and you can't crack the math section, check out our last minute cram course designed to improve your SHSAT score by 50 to 75 points within just 24 hours of focus study you can find the link to the last minute cram course in the description below also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like our video and the first question is 0.44 is equal to x over 25 what is the value of x how would you solve it is x equals 0.44 multiplied by 25 and that's where you can find the first trick so 0.44 multiply by 25 as long multiplication will take you forever what you should do instead is multiply 0.44 by 100 divide by 4 which is the same thing as multiplying by 25 which is equal to 0.44 times 100 that's equal to 44 divide that by 4 the answer is 11 nice and fast the next question the two equations y is equal to 6x minus 5 and y is equal to negative 3x plus 7 are represented as lines on a graph what is the y value of the point of intersection of the two lines? Very simple. All you have to do is set these two equations equal to each other. 6x minus 5 is equal to negative 3x plus 7. So move the 3x, so plus 3x plus 3x. You're going to get 9x minus 5 is equal to 7. Move the 5 to the other side. Shortcut here, so 9x is equal to 12. And x, therefore, is equal to 12 over 9 or 4 thirds. Most of you will pass here. That's wrong because you need to find the y value. In order to find that, plug 4 thirds into the first one or the second equation. So let me just do in the first one. So y is equal to 6 times 4 thirds minus 5. Cancel this. This is 2. This is 1. So that's equal to 8 minus 5 or 3. That is my answer. Problem number 3. The function y equals 2x minus 4 is graphed. The line of the graph travels through point 0 minus 4, which is irrelevant, and point 12 comma y. What's the value of y in 12 comma y? So what happens is, this is our x. So we, let's just plug in x, right? So y equals 2 times 12 minus 4, which is equal to 24 minus 4. And the answer is 20. Problem number 4. Which number has a value that is located between 7 and 8 on a number line? look at the multiple choices they're all square roots so what we need to do is turn 7 and 8 into a square root so 7 is equal to square root of 49 8 is equal to square root of 64. so we're looking for a value that is somewhere between square root of 49 and square root of 64. e is out f is out h is out the answer is g problem number five in the figure above K is parallel to M, straight line P intersects. The measure of angle T is 47 degrees. So this is 47 right here. Now, what is the value of angle J? Goes like this. We know that this angle J here is the same as this angle here because these are corresponding angles. So all we have to do is this angle, which is what? 180 degrees minus 47 degrees, which is 133 degrees. And the answer is C. Problem number six, which of these numbers is irrational? For quite some time, I found this concept to be especially difficult, but let me explain it in a super easy terms. So rational number means that the number can be expressed as a fraction. For example, six is a rational number because six can be expressed as six over one. Uh, nine over seven, for example, it's a rational number as well because that's a fraction can be expressed as a fraction. Now, 0.7 repeating, for example, that's equal to 7 over 9, that can be expressed as a fraction, so it's also rational. Now, what is irrational? Typically, irrational is pi, e, or square roots of numbers that don't have a perfect square inside, such as 3, or square root of 5, or square root of 7, and so on and so forth. So let's go through the multiple choices. So, e, 0.7 repeating, that's rational because that's 7 over 9. 
f square root of 9 that's equal to 3 that's a rational number as well because that's 3 over 1 so f is also out g is a fraction by itself so g is also out and clearly h is the answer problem number seven perhaps the most difficult problem on this test triangles jkl and j prime k prime l prime are congruent triangles meaning they're equal to one another which two transformations were used to transform jkl to j prime k prime l prime so let's go through multiple choice options one by one a a translation to the right so we move this triangle somehow to the right like that and then a reflection across the y-axis so clearly it's not gonna work because it's gonna look like this right so a is not the right answer option b a reflection across the y-axis so it's gonna look like this somehow like this and then a clockwise rotation of 270 degrees so clockwise goes like this so it's like one like 90 degrees 180 degrees and then 270 degrees so we just move to the same quadrant somewhere here which is clearly wrong so b is also not the right answer option c a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin so it goes like this and then a translation not reflection translation across the x-axis so it's either going this way or it's going that way so c is clearly out and the right answer is d the scatter plot shows a set of data which equation represents the most accurate line of best fit for the data shown in the scatter plot so let's go option by option option e y is equal to minus x it looks like this so clearly that's wrong so e is out instantly i would like to explore option g because option g is minus x plus two so it's going to look like this so g is also out clearly wrong now for the option f y is equal to x it will look like that that's pretty close and that's probably going to be my answer but let me just explore option h really quickly so option h is y is equal to x plus two so it's going to be that so it's between red and blue here so obviously i gotta go with the blue which is f y is equal to x another line question what's the point of intersection of the graph y is equal to minus 4x plus 3 and y is equal to 2x plus 5 same scenario let's just set them equal to each other minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 2x plus 5 plus 4x plus 4x so 3 is equal to 6x plus 5 minus 5 minus 5 so 6x is equal to minus 2 therefore x is equal to minus 2 over 6 or minus 1 third for x c out d out we are between a and b all i need to do is just plug it back in let me plug it into the first equation here so y is equal to minus 4 times negative 1 third plus 3 minus times minus is equal to plus so y is equal to positive 4 thirds plus 3 which is equal to let me do the common denominator first or maybe 1 and 1 third plus 3 which is equal to 4 and 1 third and the answer is a problem number 10 the table below represents a linear function here's the table a second linear function is represented by the equation y is equal to 4x plus 3 which statement comparing the rates of change of the two functions is true the rate of change of this function here is equal to 4 because 4 is the slope that's all i need to know to answer this problem let's go through multiple choices the rate of change blah 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 3 and 20 i don't see 4 anywhere he is out negative 3 quarters negative 24 i don't see 4 anywhere it's out oh gee i finally see the 4 so it's probably gonna be my answer h it's negative three quarters and five over six i don't see four anywhere so h is also wrong there's no need to solve the linear equation from the table just use a little bit of logic problem number 11 how many solutions are there to the equation absolute value of 4x plus 6 is equal to minus 2 let's use some logic the absolute value can never be negative it's either zero or greater than zero this side minus 2 is clearly negative hence our answer is no solution there is no need 
to solve the absolute value equation. Problem number 12, the scatter plot shows data. Which statements correctly describes this data? So E, the data have a positive linear association. It would be true if it followed this line, for example, but it's wrong, so E is wrong. F, the data have negative linear association. So if the data followed something like this, for example, it would have been correct, but it's clearly incorrect. G, the data have clustering. So we do have this cluster and the cluster, so chances that G is correct. H, the data have outliers. What is outliers? Let's assume you have like a trend, let's assume this trend here, and then the outliers would be like, okay, all the dots are here, and then one outlier is somewhere there, right? But since we do have clustering, we don't really have outliers here, so H is also not the right answer, and the right choice would be G. Finally, problem 13, what is the length of X in the triangle? We have a right triangle here, X is a hypotenuse. To find X, simply do Pythagorean theorem, which is square root of 64, plus 64, which is equal to square root of 128, the NCC. Thank goodness they didn't ask us to simplify the square root. If your SHSAT test is coming up in two months, two weeks, or 24 hours, you need to check out the last minute cram course now. This course is designed specifically for you to help you improve your SHSAT score by 50 to 75 points within just 24 hours of focus study. Find the link to the last minute cramp course in the description below. Bye-bye.